Hello everyone, I'm Paul Tranny, Principal Evangelist here at Adobe, and I wanna show you how to paint with oils in Photoshop, how to turn an image into an oil painting, plus how to make it look realistic with brushes. So let's take a look. All right, so here I am in Photoshop, and the first thing I wanna do is convert this uh, layer to a smart object to protect those pixels. Now let's jump in and turn this photo into an oil painting. I get it, there's neural filters that can do some crazy stuff, filter gallery, but you wanna go down here to stylize. This is amazing, this has been rebuilt. You wanna to go to oil paint. So this new version adds new support for DirectX and Metal compliant GPUs, just so you know, it's not using open CL anymore. So we get this little preview window right here, right? Well, guess what? We can turn on preview so it does it to the whole image. Uh, if it's a very large pix large image, then maybe you don't want to turn on that preview because that does take some processing time. But then we could just kind of play with these different settings. We turn up the, uh, the stylization, the cleanliness, the scale, right? The bristle detail. What mm -hmm. I typically like to do is crank all this up all the way. Crank that up all the way. And then stylization. Play with that stylization. You don't want to lose all of that detail, okay? Uh, you uh, want to have some of that detail in the eyes like so. And check this out right down here. Turn on lighting, right? So this is going to create some lovely lighting, as you can see, uh, based on the angle uh, that you have right down here. And you could even give it some shine. Okay, so I like this last feature. I mean, this is gorgeous. Here's a, here's a little bit of the problem that it does. It looks very fake and procedural, like you did not paint this because this looks like a pattern. Okay, so we just want to have just like a little bit of lighting down there. I'm going to show you how to fix that, okay? Because so far, all of it looks really great. So what do we want to do? We want to create a new layer because we're going to paint on a new layer and add our own little flavor to it. We'll go right over here. You'd think maybe using the brush. No, you want to go down to Mixer Brush Tool. Select Mixer Brush. Up at the top, try sort of a, a wet, heavy mix. So make this wet, make it heavy, make it pick up a lot of the colors. And what happens here, and I'll just kind of click right here. You might not notice over here on the sides, uh, but by the way, I have it set to sample all layers. So that lets me create this on this new layer right over here. But watch what happens as I kind of go in here. It kind of like doesn't look that good. And that's has mostly to do with like, the shape of the brush and some of these various settings. Don't give up on this brush, right? Don't give up on it. What you wanna do is you wanna grab some additional brushes rather than you creating or manipulating all these settings yourself. Go to brushes, this little flyout menu, and guess what? Get more brushes right here. Okay, so we'll get more brushes. Thanks to our buddy Kyle T. Webster. He's made most, if not all, of these. This is fantastic. Scroll down and right in here. This, these top four are probably my favorite. The Mega Pack. Just look where it says oils, because that's what we're creating. Mega Pack with oils. Watercolor is fantastic. Dry media and this gouache is fantastic as well. I can throw some spatter in there. But in general, download the Mega Pack and then just import it through that same menu, okay? Uh, once you do, you can see my Mega Pack right here, okay? And the watercolor and a gouache. Twirl that down. Sure enough, oh yeah, I want some real oils. That sounds great. We'll select this Kyle's Basic Wet Oil. We'll select it. We know this is a mixer brush because of this icon right here. That's the mixer brush. So match that icon up with the tool on the left. Yep, mixer brush. Right, we scroll up to the top. Oh yeah, lovely texture. This is the color that I currently have in my uh, layers panel or in my tools panel, but these are all the settings. So sometimes you do have to make sure you're gonna sample all layers because these settings are all tied to the brush. Okay, so from there, um, again, maybe you wanna hit I, sample that pink color, hit B back to the brush that you're using, and now we can start to push all this around and make that look Again, just a little more abstract. Typically when you paint, you're going large to small. So we'll just like have these large brush strokes out here, okay, as we start to kind of push that around. And it starts to sample the color underneath um, as well as sometimes the color of the um, image. So it picked up some of that brown color, or that uh, shirt color, with, which I personally like, right? Pick up some of that color, push it out here, because that's what would happen, it's like, Okay, if you don't want that to happen, by the way, I'll show you how to clean it in a second. If we don't want that, 
And again, we'll just kind of paint up here because I personally want it up here. But if you ever want to clean it, just go right up here to the top, click right here, clean brush, right? You go through, clean that brush, and now you have, again, just that pink color. But right in here, we're working large to small, kind of painting, 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 shrink that brush size using my um, bracket key, right? And we can just kind of make this look maybe a just like a little bit more rough and a little bit more abstract and a little bit more sort of, uh, I don't know, yeah, I guess abstract would be the, you know, word I'm looking for pushing that around and notice how the sampling changes with that as well. So we're having fun and that's how you would work on this. You could even jump in here, hit I, sample, B for brush, go in here. We sampled that color and then we can start to paint some more right in here with that color. It's still sampling those other little spots as well, but if you just wanna make something a little bit more um, organic, again, you could always clean the brush still sample that color, come down here and play with this part right down here as well. So I just kind of made that look kind of messy, right? It works better for the background in this case, but feel free to sort of add your own sort of style to it. And this is what I do. This is the pro tip. We made this look like a painting. We'll take these two layers and guess what? We'll convert them to a smart object again. All right, now we will go back into filter, Stylize, oil paint, shablamo, oil paint, and yes, it will add those strokes in again, but more importantly is this is where I'll deal with the lighting. So initially I wouldn't have hardly any lighting. When I do the second pass, that's when I add more lighting like this, giving it that lovely oil paint look everywhere, kind of blends it all together and not bad for uh, under five minutes. So I do encourage you also to use the neural filters and filter gallery as well in Photoshop. So that's how you can turn an image into an oil painting. Keep in mind, there's also Adobe Fresco uh, for the iPad, which is great. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the latest from Adobe and myself. And thanks so much for watching.